Specialized archives play a critical role for scholars, particularly this one, let's say, in, in forest history and conservation history and, and the environmental movement. There aren't many places that pull together in a concentrated way a set of documents and official records, oral histories and other material on this particular issue that you can find anywhere else. It's not as if you can't locate in Wyoming or Connecticut or Florida or Texas or California pieces of this story, but those are pieces and then you have to go someplace else. The genius of, of, a, of a specialized archive such as this one is that you can actually come here and do a lot of that work and then you find out where the other places are, but you've got a better context in which to locate those resources and to think about their value relative to what's located here. State historical societies serve that same function in a sense. They, they're about the state and you know that, so that's where you go. Similarly, for those of us who work in environmental history, in the United States, but also increasingly globally, um, this is the place to come, and and it, and it's it's a place to start, and that's a really important thing for any historian is to know that there is a repository somewhere that has a range of material that you can draw off of, and that becomes the basis for all sorts of work, as is, I think, exemplified in the articles in Environmental History and Forest History Today and Environment and History and other professional journals, so many of whom those scholars have come here on a Bell Travel Fellowship, for example. Uh, the way in which this organization supports you is both personal and financial, um, and that's, um, there aren't many that do that. I think I came sometime in the late 18, 1980s, 1980s <laughs> uh, early 19, 1990s, looking for material on Gifford Pinchot and the Forest Service in particular, but also trying to fill, figure out what the context was of some of Pinchot's actions. And one of the great things about this library is that it is complete with documents and diaries and images and papers of various people, all of whom are commenting on all sorts of issues, but including Gifford Pinchot, and, and it was really the oral histories where I got a clear sense of how Pinchot functioned within the agency, how his memory across time just sort of echoed uh, over the years, and so a number of folks whose oral histories were done in the 50s and 60s had worked with Pinchot or had strong memories about him and strong reactions to him, and so it was... It, it gave my book and, and much of the writing that I did in the 80s and 90s a real evocative feel of a human being that I could have gotten nowhere else. I mean, there is no other library in the country that has this kind of material. Um, and if you're working on a conservation and environmental history of one form or another, the gems that sort of you stumble across when you pull out one book and another book falls out in your hand, you go, oh my God, I didn't even know this existed, uh, has, been, has proved um, fantastic for me as a scholar and also, you know, fabulous for me as a human being. It's like I didn't know this material was there and that's that's what's that's what's great about libraries in general and the Forest History Society in particular. Trust me, I've been to a lot of libraries and you know one of the things that is striking about this one relative to say the gargantuan ones of the Library of Congress which you know were overwhelming and intimidating in size although they are complete with information is that you get to work with the historians here, you get to work with uh, Jamie and, and Cheryl Oaks, uh, with you and others, and just simply sit down and say, as we did this week, okay, what are you working on? What are some of the issues that you think are you need to address? And then it becomes a conversation about what we think we have, what gets sparked off of those conversations, and then that leads to secondary and third level um, possibilities that I would not have conceived of had I walked into the library and said, I just want this material on the Pinchot Institute for Conservation or Gray Towers. There's a lot of material here that unless you ask the folks on the staff, you're not utilizing this space. Now that's true at every library, but what's, what's joyful about this place is there's not that many people and it's a small shop and small shops are really very impressive in terms of the kind of service, help, support that you can get. Um, and the sort of nagging requests that you could make, uh, and people tend to take you seriously, uh, which is great. Uh, it's been a delightful experience since the late 80s, coming back for very different kinds of things and, and rediscovering and discovering anew the kind of resources that, that are within this archive.